We say that a language is non-regular if there is no regular expression defining it, which means there is no finite automaton recognizing it, which could only occur if there is a pairwise distinguishable set with an infinite number of elements. But finding a pairwise distinguishable set with an infinite number of elements takes insight and creativity. So here's everything you can be taught about how to have insight and be creative. More practically, finding an infinite set seems a little daunting. Is there another property of regular languages that allows us to decide if a language is regular? So let's think about this. Suppose we have a finite automaton recognizing our language. Since it is, well, finite, it has a finite number of states. So suppose it has n states. If the length of our string is at least as great as n, then in the processing of our string we have to repeat a state, and so there has to be a loop that takes us from a state back to the same state. So any sufficiently long string in our language must contain a substring that loops us from a state back to the same state, and we can repeat this loop as many times as we want to get another string in our language. For example, it's a grammatically correct English sentence, but so... What? A cease and desist order? Oh, okay, I'll change it. So, for example, is a grammatically correct English sentence, but we can prepend this with, and this is also a grammatically correct English sentence. In fact, so is, and using our notation, we can interpolate as many copies of he wrote as we want to and still obtain a grammatically correct English sentence. So, formally, let our finite automaton be a five-tuple, and let's consider a string with n symbols, where n is greater than or equal to the number of states. And let our finite automaton process our string as follows. Then the sequence of states, s0 being q0, s1, s2, and so on, must repeat at least one state. Since there are n plus 1 states in the sequence, but the number of states is less than or equal to n, the pigeonhole principle applies. So in any sufficiently long string x, there's a substring, we'll call that l, where in the processing of l, we go from a state back to the original state. Consequently, we can write our string x as the initial part u, the loop l, and the final part v. And since the loop must occur on or before the nth state, that first portion, u, l, must have a length less than n. Moreover, if our original string is in l, we can drop out the middle uv is also an L because removing the loop won't change anything. And more importantly, if our string is in L, then repeating the loop as many times as we want will also give us a string in L. And this gives us what's known as the pumping lemma. Let L be a regular language recognized by a finite automaton with n states, and suppose we have a string whose length is at least n. Then x can be decomposed as u, l, v, where the first part of the string has length less than or equal to n. Moreover, if x is in the language, u, v is in the language, and u, l, repeated, v, is also in the language for all k. So the pumping lemma gives us a way of deciding whether a particular language is regular. Suppose x is in a language. The theorem tells us that in the first part of any sufficiently long string x, we can find a loop. This loop can be repeated endlessly to give us another element of the language. So if we can't find a loop in the first part of x, then L isn't regular. 
So let's consider the language consisting of strings where there's some number of zeros followed by the same number of ones, and let's prove that L is not regular. We could prove this by showing that any pairwise distinguishable set over L can be expanded, but we'll leave that as an exercise. Remember Gauss's dictum, prove theorems any way you can, then find a different proof. So remember, concrete never hurts. Suppose we have a finite automaton recognizing L with, oh, I don't know, how about four states. By the pumping lemma, any string in L with at least four symbols must be of the form U, L, V, where the first part of the string has length less than or equal to four. Dropping out the middle gives us something in L, and we can repeat the middle as many times as we want and get something else in L. But consider something like, if the first part of the string has length less than or equal to 4, then it must be one of Now we don't know which one it is, but suppose it's the first one then L itself has to be some string of zeros. But if L equals zero, our string could be decomposed as a first part, L, and the last part, and our theorem would imply that the first and last part would be in our language, and also the first part repeating L and the last part would also be in our language. But neither of these is true. And a similar argument holds if our middle is 0, 0, or 0, 0, 0. And a similar argument holds for all other possibilities of UL. So L cannot be recognized by a finite automaton with four states. Now, this actually proves that L can't be recognized by a finite automaton with four states, but it doesn't quite prove that L is not regular, since maybe there's a different finite automaton that will work. So let's build on a concrete foundation. Suppose we have a finite automaton recognizing L with n states. Then, by a very similar argument, 0n, 1n is a string in L, but in any decomposition of the first part, the L is going to be some string of zeros. And for any k greater than or equal to 1, repeating the middle doesn't produce something in L, so no finite automaton recognizing L can exist, and consequently L is not regular.